Hi, this is Vanessa and welcome back to Skipping with Jesus. This is going to be a new, um, something new we're going to be trying today. I am, um, this, I had a dream back on, um, January, February, March, April, <laughs> April the 8th of 2024. And it's been like really, um, just coming back to me the last, I would guess several days of, and more revelation has been given to me from this word. And, and, um, but I want to try something new. I'm going to, I believe that this dream just does not pertain to me. It's a dream that I need to release to you, but I would love after I release it and I'll give you to, to the best of my ability, all the, the revelations that I have received, because I continue to get more. Um, but I would like for you to um, give me give me your revelation in the comment section, because I believe that we can start speaking into each other's lives in the encounters that we're having. Sometimes it takes an outside source to speak a revelation that could possibly just be right in our face, right? So um, uh, the title of my dream was, where are those in, in my deep? I'm sorry, where are those in my deeper? In other words, where are my, those in my deeper water? Where are they? where are they? So that's what um, the kernel of this dream is. But let me start off with the word of prayer and then we'll go, I'll read the dream, then I'll give you revelation to what I've received. And I would love for you to, sp I would love to receive if you get any revelation that applies to, to me and then I'll just take it to the Holy Spirit and I'll ask him for confirmation or and um, just the way we do um, prophetic words. I would love to have you speak into my life. Uh, you hear me talk all the time. I would love to hear you speak some, okay? So Holy Spirit, here am I. I know that this was a divine, divine dream given to me from God Almighty himself. I ask, Lord, that as I read this dream and give revelation to an interpretation that I receive from Holy Spirit, that um, others will receive new insight or maybe the um, revelation and interpretation will speak to their life also. I ask these things in your precious holy name. Amen. So I need to make you... I'm going to go back and let you know, okay, you've heard me speak that finally I understand how it was that my daughter's voice at the time, um, just a couple months after her death, that I heard her voice at the swing set. And she told me through her voice, which now I know at the time, okay, I that was when God cut me to a stump. I had not a clue other than I knew it was her voice. And so I thought it was actually her that had shown up in spirit form, okay? Which I know, I know today through many, many um, revelations and um, healing that I have done, okay, that not I have done, but that Christ has done through me and the Holy Spirit has taught me, okay, and the Word has revealed to me that um, God has been using um, guardian angels from, specifically from um, strong, faithful women in my life to speak into my life from dreams and like in that play in that um, encounter, it was actually her voice that spoke to me. But it was the, her guardian angel, and we get this from when Peter was broken out of jail, and he goes to the church's house and he knocks on the door, and Rhoda opens the door. She shuts the door in his face. She goes back and tells the people, "Oh, Peter's at the door." Oh, they said, they, 
they were praying for his re release, okay? But they they sent her back, say, oh, that's just his angel. So they were more comfortable with um, guardian angels because they appear or they resemble the person that they are assigned to, okay? So this is, I wanted to get that um um, that little um, bit of information because I have four um, guardian angels that have been active in my dreams and encountering um, it, like at the swing and those are my grandmother when I first my grandmother's guardian angel when I first started writing my book of uh, I had visions of her and several visions that I speak of in my book. Um, and um, before that was um, my daughter's guardian angel, okay? And then um, in this dream, it's an ex-sister-in-law that I was very close with. In fact, her and I were pregnant. I was pregnant with Celeste and she was pregnant with twins. And um, she was, it was, it was, um, the Holy Spirit, when I was in uh, the unit, okay, the Holy Spirit would um, reveal to me when there was going to be someone that was going to die, when it was their time. And actually, um, my um, ex-sister-in-law, um, the Holy Spirit revealed to me the morning when I was walking, this was, she was the first one that Holy Spirit started um, revealing to me when um, someone was going to die. And I was walking into work and I, again, I worked at the critical care unit and um, in a hospital. I had this like weight, like literally land on my shoulders. And then I had a knowing that this precious sister-in-law was about to cross over. I picked up the phone, I called my my brother's wife, my sister-in-law, and told her to tell this precious lady's brother she, he needed to get to um, several towns over uh, within, it's, it was like an hour and a half, that he needed to get to his sister's bedside because she was about to cross over. Later, I found out, okay, that the same time I had this happened to this encounter, okay, that um, she was taken out of the house and taken to hospice. And later that morning, she did pass away. But that was the start of, of God using me to prepare families, to prepare the, the, the actual patients to their, in their transition um, from this life to the next. And um, I just needed to throw that in there to you. And now my mother passed um, last May was a, this past May was a year ago. And um, God has been using her in some of my, well, her guardian angel. I wanna be very careful to let you know, it is not these um, precious women's spirits, okay? It is their guardian angel that is um, leading me and help guiding me through this calling that God has placed on my life. And if you'll remember, I don't know if you'll remember or not, but I write in my book that when I, when I started, um, when Holy Spirit started downloading my book to me, he, he took me to the place of Bethel and he laid me on the ground with on my head on the rock and he was showing me all these angels that were ascending and descending from the throne of God into my life okay that they were bringing messages down to me from Abba and so now fast forward <laughs> about four years and now the revelation of these precious faithful women that had been in my life that I had no clue that they had been praying, pouring into my life, and now their guardian angels are actually messengers from my Abba 
that are helping direct me on the path that he has for my destiny. I know that's a little deep, but we're going to go deeper, okay? So anyway, so I wanted to give you that foreknowledge so that you'll know that my sister-in-law that I speak about, my ex-sister-in-law that I speak about, she died, I think some, I will say at least nine years ago, nine years ago. And, um, um, she, uh, was, uh, um, in this dream. So I'm just going to say sister-in-law, but you'll know it was my ex-sister-in-law. Okay. That it, it's her guardian angel. All right. It's her guardian angel. It's not my sister-in-law. It is her guardian angel. So this is the story. This is my dream. My husband and I lived up the road from my ex-sister-in-law because I knew the people her and her husband bought the house from, I found myself in the front yard with her, talking about the history of what I knew of the house. Bill and I, Bill's my husband, Bill and I got on a motorcycle and drove off on the ride to an undetermined location in the dream. As we were riding, I remembered to tell her about the trees lining the front of the property being pecan trees and that they produced in a different season than normal pecan trees. Bill wouldn't let me get um, the phone out while we were riding. So he stopped the uh, motorcycle and parked it in, the, in a view spot along the winding road around the mountain. I had to a struggle getting the phone out when I got through to her and told her about the unseasonal pecan trees. She said she knew of them. I told her that I would be glad to help harvest the trees when they were ready. It must have been spring because everyone seemed to be enjoying getting outside, enjoying the sunshine. The next scene was um, in what appeared to be the front yard again, but this time it was larger and there was a large man-made swimming hole that was in the middle of this large pasture land. There were many people there appearing like a family reunion. I was standing off observing the activity around the watering hole. The next scene, I am in a room with um, my sister, ex-sister-in-law. She is sitting at what appeared to be a makeup table, getting ready to go somewhere. I was standing some distance behind her, again, observing what was going on. I had a knowing that her youngest son was missing. Her husband received a phone call with a military encrypted message saying um, where they could find their son. The following scene, I was standing on what felt like a high wooden platform that stretched out into a lake where multiple swimmers were scattered throughout the lake. I was standing on the edge at the front of the platform contemplating whether to jump. My sister-in-law was very close to me, encouraging me to jump. I was experiencing some anxiety and I would say fear, having watched others jumped off the sides and landing only in knee and waist deep water. The fear came from not knowing the depth of the water I was jumping into. Um, her husband jumped from the side of the platform, having jumped in waist deep water. His face was lit up with such joy that I did not understand because of only because of seeing him only standing in waist deep water. I cautiously made my way around her because she could not, she would not move as if trying to trap me at the end of the platform and push me in before, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Oh my word, thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh goodness. Before I was able to move around her, my ear caught two people on the other side of the lake climbing out of the water. They were back back um slidden. They were black they were back black silhouettes, but I had a knowing one was um, my son going to place his going to the place his cousin needed to be rescued. The scene flipped back to the room where uh, my sister-in-law was at her makeup table. She began saying how hot she was and that, that something must be wrong with the air condition. Again, like in the other scene, I found myself as an observer. But this time, I went over to her and touched her neck, finding her to be quite hot and sweating. I thought to myself, she is just having a hot flash. She got up to go check on the thermostat. While she was gone, I checked, to, um, checked the air conditioning vent and cool air was blowing out of it. And then I woke up out of um, the dream. Okay, so I want to give you some symbolism, okay? <coughs> and, um, wow, and what Holy Spirit just revealed to me is so awesome. So anyway, in this dream, we're going to look at the pecan trees. So, um, the pecan tree, well, first of all, the first time I meet my sister-in-law is in the front yard. And that that is symbolic of in the future. I am looking into the future, okay? And then I get on this motorcycle with my husband, which my husband is symbolic of Jesus Christ, okay? And the motorcycle is symbolic of a, a strong, independent a ministry where it's Jesus and I, okay? <laughs> Remember the dream I had regarding walking down the uncharted path with Jesus? That, see? So anyway, that that's, um, that's a side note. But anyway, so we're going up this mountain. In other words, we are going up to the level, we're going higher. We're going higher so I can see from his perspective. And the phone, the phone is, uh, that I, symbolizes to me that I am communicating with Jesus. So we are going higher, okay? We're going higher to where, to the viewpoint where I can look over the valley and I can see, okay? I can see um, where we live. I can see uh, um, my, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law's home and their land. I can see it all, but it's um, the struggle that I had getting the phone out of the motorcycle was there was a delay in me hearing the voice of the Lord. All right. But <clears throat> having that delay it was someone else that was delaying me because at, um at one time my husband was being my husband and wouldn't let me take the phone out and call her but after i um um we stopped i was able to take the phone out meaning i was communicating straight with <clears throat> with um abba father all right and um his will and purpose and as I um, am talking to my sister-in-law, which she says she already knows, okay, which lets me know that she is a, an, an angel because she already has the knowing that these pecan trees are harvest out of season. In other words, they are being harvest in springtime when pecan trees are not harvest until August. That means they went through the cold winter months, the hard months of, 
are of birthing forth this new um, these pecans, okay, and that they were falling on the ground, and Holy Spirit revealed to me that there is going to be a double harvest with these pecan trees. <laughs> A double harvest. In other words, what it is, is these pecan trees represent, or the pecans represent individual souls, okay? And these um, pecans have a hard shell around them, right? Which is significant or symbolic with trauma or symbolic with church hurt are symbolic with um, um, demonic activity. They have this shell around them that they can't be reached, okay? But what happens is that we heart, um, I can see us harvesting all these pecans and then working at taking and cracking, the Holy Spirit taking and cracking the shell and so what you have is a double harvest. So they initially come to Christ, but they have all this um, history with them. In other words, they are a people that are from Goshen, all right? They have Egypt still in them. So what God is wanting to, us to do in this harvest season is to walk with those that don't have ears to hear yet, don't have eye, his eyes to see yet, and we are to walk with them through the Holy Spirit's healing for them to re, be removed from their Egypt. So these people that are coming from Goshen and, and out of their Egypt, they still carry their Egypt. All right, but this is going to be a double harvest. In other words, it's the pecans that are um, being harvested out of season. And then there's a double harvest coming with each one of these souls. So it's like we can't just lead somebody to Christ and, and leave them out there on their own. No. We cannot do that. We have got to walk with them because the enemy has so many hooks in them from their slavery in Egypt. We have got to help them identify um, those um, places within their lives that they're being held captive, whether it be shame or guilt or condemnations. It's all lies from the enemy, okay? But, and campfires in our mindset of being rejected, of, of, of being abandoned. You know, it's like uh, we have got to walk through with them. So anyway, let me expedite a little bit. So um, we go, so that's the part, the, the symbolism that I've got so far. And um, we go in that field, that field uh, that I said it was like a, a family reunion. It's our families that we have to start with. It's those generational curses. It's those generational cycles that we've got to start breaking. And that's part of that double harvest. That's part of the double harvest. So anyway, and then I, for those of you that have read my book, or I don't know if there's a video that I released that, that um, when I first heard the audible voice of God was the day I was standing my last day in the critical care unit where I, um, where I, um, had heard the audible word of God saying, um, <laughs> this is awesome. Cause he just revealed this to me. <laughs> oh my goodness. He said to me, my daughter, he, um, I know how much you love caring for my children, but my time for you here is complete. I have a new platform for you that I need to prepare you for. 
And that's what he said, but it was audible because this was when he was training me how to hear his voice and he was speaking from behind me. All right, remember Jesus, when I was going through my training, Jesus spoke from my right, Abba spoke from my ba from the backside and the Holy Spirit sp spoke from my inner gut right here, okay? So anyway, so this scene where um, I am on this platform, okay? is the is the platform that holy that god uh, audible voice told me he was preparing me for sorry i just got that revelation so it just is sometimes overwhelming Ooh. and i was standing there and remember the title is where are those in my deeper where are those my deeper? See, I was standing on this platform at the edge and, and my sister-in-law's guardian angel was like really in my space, like just trying to like encourage me to jump, 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 jump. And I wouldn't because I was looking off to, I was distracted. I was distracted by the ones that just were ankle deep and knee deep. And um, and then the ones across the, the lake, there were people on the shoreline of the lake all the way around, but there was like nobody in the deep waters. There was nobody even treading water. There was nobody on floats. There was nobody in the deep water. It was all bare. And um, so, um, and what was holding me back was, I had the a human fear that when I jumped, that I would hit the bottom and I would like break a leg or whatever. But what my, what this guardian angel was trying to do was push me into the deeper, push me into the deeper things of God. Sorry. And um, anyway, and then the scene with with um, that I knew that the son had, was missing in the military inscription. That was, and it was coming through on my on my sister-in-law's guardian angel, her husband. It was coming through his phone. They called to say that the son was missing. Well, this was symbolic of all the souls. And what I considered in the dream of my sister-in-law's guardian angel was experience a hot flash. It wasn't that. She was showing, she, it was symbolism of those precious souls that are going to spend eternity in hell, in the fires of hell, throughout eternity tormented. And I want you to know, since I've had this dream, I've gone into the deeper. I've surrendered. In Ezekiel, it talks about the vision that is given to him where the water is flowing from the throne room and it's flowing around the altar. And he said he went to ankle deep. And he said, he went 1,750 feet more and went knee deep. And then he went 1,750 feet more, went waist deep. 
Well, in my dream, those people that were waist deep, oh, they were so happy. They were so much joy. There was so much laughter and, and shouting and singing. But they didn't know that what they were experiencing in the ankle and knee and waist deep waters could be triple, could be tripled, could be, could be intensified a hundredfold if they would just go into the deeper. And in the vision, Ezekiel sees himself where he cannot even touch the bottom, where he has to swim. I want you to know, I am testifying of it today, that you can reach a place in the deeper of God's glory and revelation and knowing his son, that you just have to float. You just have to float. You just have to lay on your back and float and let the current of the Holy Spirit just take you wherever Abba wants you to go according to his will and purpose and plan for your life. I pray that you can get something from this dream. And please, please, if you have additional revelation for me, I want to know, I want to know all God has for me. I want to go every place he has for me. I want to go so deep that I've totally lost any sense of natural. I want my, my natural life to live in his supernatural I want to be completely surrendered on his offer, altar and him just saturating me and consuming me with, with his fire. And I pray that that's your, also your desire. There are souls that are needing us to go into the deeper, to go in the deeper with our Lord. He's calling us where are all the ones of my children that are needed in the deeper with me? Where are they? Where are they? I am going to ask you if not only if you will post comments of revelation or whatever you see in this dream, but if you would also um, forward it, let others hear it, because I believe um, that Holy Spirit's gonna use this dream. He's gonna use this dream to awaken some hearts like he did mine. I mean, just as I'm sitting here, being obedient to the Holy Spirit to release this dream I've had been sitting on since April, the 1st of April, that he gave me the revelation that this is the platform that, that my Abba some five years ago told me he was preparing me for and yet, as I was standing on the platform, I didn't jump into his deeper. I didn't. But I know today, there is no limit. There is no limit to his deeper. Because the deeper you go with him, the higher you go in his glory the more glorious he reveals, the more glory he reveals to you. I would encourage you also, I had a vision that I released a video, I think the day that I had this vision, it's um, regarding God's glory portal. And then explains of the vision I had of God's glory portal. And with 
each step we go up, Jesus comes down to meet us. There'll be eventually a point where we are standing on the same step together. I want to be there, totally surrendered to him. You know, people don't understand. People don't understand people like me. And it's okay. It's okay. I can understand how I can be strange. I can understand. But you don't know where I come from. You just... And that he chose me to take a stand for my children and my children and my grandchildren. And it's my heart's desire, my heart's desire that through my de God's destiny in my life, that as I am living it to the best of my ability with the purest of intentions, that I leave a legacy for my grandchildren, that they know without a shadow of a doubt, they are children of God the Father, and that they have a relationship with His Son, and that Holy Spirit can work through them to do greater works, to do greater works than He even did. This is the legacy I want to leave my kids. And it all started with my daughter. I'm standing on her shoulders, backwards from everybody else. And, and I just told my daughter-in-law the other day, I was like, you know, I, rem I just remember that tr trip with my daughter from Lakeland to, to um, St. Pete Beach. I was driving and she said, Mom, sometimes I feel like I'm the parent. Such, there could never have been such a more true word, but yet God the Father placed her in my womb as a miracle baby and she gave me 25 years with her and in his mercy and his grace and his love for me and where he's called and purposed for me. He's allowed her guardian angel to speak life into me and help guide me. And he knows, only he knows. <laughs> I know of, well, actually I know of five angels I have. I have four guardian angels that would be Celeste's guardian angel, my grandmother's, my mom, and my sister-in-law, and an angel of theology, because <laughs> that was one of the excuses that I used. I can't do this because I don't know the scriptures that well. <laughs> he says, oh, don't you worry. I got you covered there. <laughs> All right. I love you guys. May God bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. Let's skip down those uncharted pathways with Jesus. Don't forget to post your comments of Revelation and let's speak into each other's lives. Okay. Bye-bye.